Well, the president attracted another crowd on Monday when he suddenly left the White House. Bill Plant has covered five presidents, but he has never seen anything like this. Bill, good morning. Good morning. Well, I was just minding my own business, walking down Pennsylvania Avenue with a grilled cheese sandwich on my way back, and suddenly there's a big crowd coming at me. I uh, look more like New York than D.C. And then I saw a Secret Service motioning people aside. Yep, it was the president out for a walk again. Politicians sacrifice a lot to live in this exclusive piece of real estate. But once they get in, most are eager to find a way out of the bubble. I don't get a chance to take walks very often. Secret Service uh, gets a little stressed. Uh, but every once in a while, I, I'm able to sneak off. You know, the, uh, I'm, I'm sort of like the circus bear that kind of breaks the chain. So Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough suggested an afternoon coffee break. And without telling the press or most of the staff, the commander-in-chief walked a block and a half to a nearby Starbucks. He told a staffer on the way out, the bear is loose again. How old are you, Cora? Seven. Three weeks ago, he surprised tourists on the National Mall. Oh, my God! Choosing to walk rather than ride to a meeting at the Interior Department. This Washington, D.C. Little League team wasn't expecting the president either, even though its roster included White House Press Secretary Jay Carney's daughter. The president made a surprise visit on his way to a recent fundraiser to take pictures and toss the ball around. And this president is hardly the first to get White House cabin fever. Harry Truman went out for a long walk most mornings at a faster clip than the reporters who trudged along. Dwight Eisenhower, like most recent presidents, fled the White House for the golf course whenever he could. Ronald Reagan slipped away at least once and complained after less than a year in office that the White House was like a gilded cage. I sometimes look out the window at Pennsylvania Avenue and wonder what it would be like to be able to just walk down the street to the corner drugstore and look at the magazines. I can't do that anymore. Early in his presidency, Bill Clinton went for frequent morning jogs. His habit of stopping for fast food afterward even prompted a parody on Saturday Night Live. Let's stop in here for a second. I'm a little parched from the jog. Uh, sir, we've only been jogging for three blocks. <laughs> Besides, Mrs. Clinton asked us not to let you into any more fast food places. After a while, all presidents feel confined and start looking for ways to shed the motorcade, the security personnel, and the reporters who generally tag along. Guys? Yeah, you got to give me a little space, though. <laughs> and usually that means keeping reporters at a distance. How's the coffee? Uh, tea. <laughs> uh, well, the president's staff says, look, there's no planned message in these impromptu outings. This, he just likes to take a walk. But they do like the message that they think it sends, which is that he's a regular guy. Now, <laughs> I should add that by the time I got back, that grilled cheese was cold. <laughs> Bill, I have sat next to you many a time having lunch. I don't ever remember you having a grilled cheese. Did it have truffles in it? <laughs> uh, this is a new grilled cheese shop. We like it. <laughs> Bill, all I have to say is I hope the president was drinking Oprah chai. Did you find out at Starbucks? <laughs> Didn't find out, but he did have tea, no question about it. And when I asked him if it was coffee, he said tea. Tea. <laughs> I'm going to vote Oprah chai on that one. Thank you, Bill. Thank you.